Hello everyone, I'm Rishi Passad. Welcome along to Racing Weekly, a podcast and YouTube show brought to you by Odds Checker in association with Bet365. A stellar panel to my left. As always, uh, the man playing on the left-hand side of <laughs> midfield, Sam Turner. He's got pace. He's got trickery. No, no trickery. Well, we know that. I was just pretending. Just up and down. <laughs> but the man, the engine room of today's midfield is Gavin Lynch. Now, we got a steering and, and group. And the Ann <laughs> You don't move. Just stay in that centre so circle. Right, class player, <laughs> wouldn't he? We got a steering group together. Uh, we did a review of all the Racing Weekly shows and you came out near the top. So mm -hmm. negotiations took place <laughs> and we've, we've managed to secure you yeah. for this well, particular show. Glad to be here. What's, what's the Gavin Lynch portfolio betting over the last few weeks, months like? Winning a few quid for the year, uh, not a fortune, but winning a few quid. The last week, has been, week or two has been probably a bit tricky. And in terms of Cheltenham, uh, very much up and down, some good ones and uh, one or two bad ones. All right, we'll get to those in a minute. Sam, yeah. how yeah. things been with you? Uh, all right, we're not talking about football this week, are we? But um, well, I'm happy to talk about it. No, 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 no. We we the there race. wasn't any football anyway over the weekend, <laughs> was it? Um, and the test cricket was good. We'll talk about that if you like. Oh, basball. Yeah. Are you into basball? Basball. <laughs> yeah, I, I like cricket, that. but yeah. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> uh, Brendan McCullum, he's oh, okay. the best, one of the best things to happen to world cricket, I'd say. Really? Why are they getting more attacking with Test cricket? Oh, it's just yeah. superb. Really? Declared on the first day. Go ahead. Didn't let Jimmy Anderson bowl. 300, was it 320 up? Five for nine, they declared England. Yeah. Really? Yeah, put New Zealand in, ruffle their feathers. We might even be good enough to beat Ireland occasionally now. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me this, do you think Test cricket will end up over four days or...? I hope not. Well, it is anyway with basketball, isn't it? Yeah. I hope not, um, because we, we West Indies have two very, very traditional test batsmen who open yeah. the batting. Four days gives us Chris no Tavare. chance. They do. They make <laughs> they're, they're worse than Chris Tavare. They make look, Chris Tavare look like Harry Brook. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, enough about other sports, yep. because of course mm. on Racing Weekly, we're concentrating on excellent racing that we've just seen last week. We're also going to look ahead to the weekend coming up, the Ida Chase in particular, and the Coral Trophy at uh, Kempton. And we'll also be looking ahead to the Cheltenham Festival. We've picked out the three races this week, which are the Ryanair, the Champion Hurdle, and the Mayor's Hurdle. We'll be chatting to Sam and Gavin about those. Uh, but of course, before we get into all of that, don't forget that the tickets for the Racing Weekly live show are now on sale. It's on Monday, the 6th of March, at the George Pub in Chiswick. Be myself, Sam Turner, Johnny Ward, uh, Pat Cooney, Nick Schofield, uh, and who are, who else is going to be there? You're doing a signing know. session, aren't you? You're signing. <laughs> I'm signing, signing for a new anything, team. Anything signing and everything. for a new team. Yeah, um, yeah. It's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun, uh, and it's ten pounds to get in, and you get a free drink, and of course. Well, a half time pie. As I suggested to a member of the Odds Checker Glitterati, you could have your pie and your pie and then go. You didn't have to stay for the preview, <laughs> would you really? What You've a got deal. good value there. What a deal. Um, of course, the link for the tickets can be found in the description of this show. So uh, hopefully we'll see some of you there in person and then you can, all the people who've been having the go at me on the YouTube comments, <laughs> you can do it, do it to my face. It's much more fun that way. Uh, but in the meantime now, we can concentrate on racing recap. Well, there is only one place to start with Racing Recap, and that was the Asker Chase from Saturday. Um, where do you stand with Shishkin now, Gavin? 10 out of 10. He was brilliant. Uh, the addition of the tongue tie, the wind up, the increase in distance, nothing wrong with his bones. Uh, he, was, he was excellent. Uh, what did he win by 16 lengths? I was very surprised that Nico pushed him all the way out to the line, considering the Ryanair is only, say, four weeks away. Um, I think that he was fantastic. He's going to go for three miles then to entry. I actually uh, backed him this morning to win the King George at 8-1. to one. I think that's a good price. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing is he's a nine-year-old. He's not getting uh, maybe any better or any younger, but he certainly liked to beat uh, the second Pictori, who's rated 162, to beat that so easily. Yeah. It was definitely a performance in the mid-170s, mm. which should be good enough to win the Ryanair. Uh, my own opinion is that I won't back him at 11-10. to 10. I won't lay him at 11-10. to 10. I won't back anything to beat him. So mm. definitely a race to watch. And Nicky Henderson is, to me, the nicest man in racing. Uh, I seen the video of him watching the race. Did you see that? Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. So the joy to get that for a man, what's Nicky in the seventies, I presume. The celebrations, just, just yeah. brilliant, isn't it? Heartwarming. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, he's nearly as emotional as you watching DIY SOS, isn't he? Or the no, repair shop. I, I can't handle that. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, great scenes. Great to have a star of the national hunt game, you know, back in the ascendancy as well. Um, there is a little bit of a, you know, the, the cynic in you thinks, oh, the race fell apart a little bit. Pick Dory is pick Dory. 
been brilliantly placed this year to, mm. to mop up three races. Probably be better on a flat, a proper flat track. He's a patchy record at Ascot, hasn't he? Fakir Duderi, some one sage said to me, JJ was jumping fences that nobody knew were there. <laughs> <laughs> he was that wide on the yeah. track. But look, he was... Oh, God, sorry. I can't believe it. I put Let's leave that in. Yeah, because it's the first time that has ever happened <laughs> He's leaving them on Racing Weekly. <laughs> so, we've just had a historic moment. Yeah. And the first ever £100 injured jockey charity fund fine okay. goes to Sam Turner. Congratulations. I know, I know unbelievable. I've, t I've told her not to ring me. <laughs> Wrong number. Yeah, absolutely. They want me to be on Love Island next year if I said no. So, you were just... Criticising everything that ran in the race, weren't you? So well, yeah, well, I was no, just, no, I was just uh, JJ was probably a little bit wider than he would have liked, but look, the horse was taken off his feet, wasn't he? Fakir Duderi, yeah. he, he wants soft ground at that trip. He's worth trying over three mile on I good ground. I thought that was JJ Slevin on the phone, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good shout. We will be soon enough. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was just complete you know, demolition, wasn't yeah. it, really? A totally authoritative display. Great to see him travelling in his comfort zone and jumping as well, uh, and just being able to lay up. You know, the horse must have felt that he was just going on a... Would, you know, would it be fair to say that that's the best he has travelled? Uh, over he, fences? I yes, think because I'm, of the trip. Simple as Absolutely, that, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. even the time against uh, Energamine, which shows that people talk about Energamine has never beaten much, mm. but the race last season against Shishkin was an amazing race. Uh, top class, as good as you'll ever get. Um, he didn't travel that day. Nicky said yesterday he was off the bridle the whole way against Energamine, mm. but just it was his class and determination that got him through. So, to travel so well over two miles five... I think he'll stay three miles. Mm. Uh, obviously, they're not going to go to the Gold Cup because it's just maybe... It's right not now. too soon because he's nine, but, yeah. you know, uh, the Ryanair is staring them in the face, so they're going to go for that, I think. Amazing, though, isn't it? <laughs> Most people would say, yeah, brilliant to Nicky, well done to him and his team getting the horse back. Other people on social media, what have they been doing running him over two miles? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah, can never yeah, win. Yeah, yeah. Idiots, no, they can't train. And, and is, is the, the, the Ryanair the right race for him? There's no, no qualms about... The Gold Cup. You're happy that this is the race, especially with Alaho being out the picture. It's a it's an, an, an open goal. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. You know what's what's going to beat him? Blue Lord, Fury Road, Janadil, etc. He's if he's on his A game, he'll beat them. So I think they're totally right to go for the Ryanair. Put it this way, after the Tingle Creek, if you said to Nicky Henderson, you're even money to beat Blue Lord, Janadil, Fury Road, yeah. no Alaho, he'd have bitten your hand off, wouldn't he? I'm yeah. Standing there in the yeah. On suddenly enclosure at Sandown after that. Save, save that Ryanair chat for later on, because amazingly we are previewing the Ryanair later okay. on. Um, you already touched on Nicky, Nicky Henderson's achievement in bringing this horse back, but Sam, obviously, we've seen it before with Sprinter Sack. We've seen Nicky handle horses that have been fragile and mm -hmm. I mean, obviously see you then most Binocular. famously. You know, Binocchio. So many horses that have been awkward and tricky to handle, he's done it. Where would this achievement rank for the Nicky Henderson fans and bringing Shishkin back after... Well, I mean, he, it's not after far the, behind Sprinter Saka, is it? How old was he when he won the Champion Chase? 11? Yeah, definitely Sprinter, double figures. 10 or 11, yeah. Yeah, which was an incredible performance, was, yeah. really. I know the race fell apart a bit, but it was still an incredible performance to get in there in that sort of domineering form. I, I think this is a tremendous training performance, really. And, and I think reading between the lines and speaking to one or two people, I think Nicky was sort of kicking himself for not having him in the champion chase because a week before Saturday, he was sort of schooling and schooling like a proper two-mile chaser again, showing plenty of speed, showing the, that proficiency over his fences that haven't always been there. Now, that's schooling, it's not in race. But they went a mother and father of a gallop on Saturday. They went a good gap. Pictori served it up from the front. I thought, I thought Pictori ran a terrific race. Yeah. I remember interviewing Harry Cobden, I think I mentioned it to you, um, after he won at Kempton, his, his previous start. And I said to Harry Cobden, I said, well, you know, obviously he's, he's done so well this season. Surely it's time now for grade ones, Ascot Chase, Ryanair. He must have a good chance in that. And he went, look, I think this is a very good grade two horse. Yeah. I don't think... And that's what the race proved, mm -hmm. certainly for Pictori, mm -hmm. regardless of Shishkin. Um, the other thing I'd like to mention about Nicky Henderson, if it's okay, is if you document the way he has spoken about Shishkin from the very start. When people talk about Nicky Henderson, sometimes you know he doesn't run horses here, he runs horses there, whatever, he ducks the challenge, he doesn't take the challenge, takes the challenge on. I, I really now, in hindsight, and I know with the benefit of hindsight, we're always a lot clever, uh, more clever than we had been previously, but with the benefit of hindsight, the way he has been open about this horse, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about the things that he has been concerned about, the way he travels, maybe he's running him over the wrong trip. I do think that actually, when you look back at it, 
Nicky Henderson has really been a credit to himself more than anything else in the way he's explained everything about Shishkin to this point. Do you not? Yeah, I think uh, Nicky is nearly too nice. He, he's yeah. always trying to please everybody and, oh yeah, look, next week we might run him an ascot and then when he doesn't run, people are giving out. I think people have absolutely no right to complain about any trainer or owner's decision, such as Honeysuckle. If they want to send her, which they are now, to the mayor's hurdle instead of the champion, they're paying the bills. It's their mayor, mm -hmm. it's their trainer, it's their mm -hmm. horse. You know, we have absolutely no right to, to make comments on that, I think. And I think Nicky has been brilliant, yeah. That, that would be my... I think Nicky sometimes doesn't do the best by himself. He, he's tried to be too honest, mm. too forthcoming, mm -hmm. give too much information, in contrast to one or two of his counterparts, you know, perhaps from across the Irish Sea. Oh, yeah, no, William Mullins will never really... Close yeah, to chest, he doesn't say they? much. No. Because then he doesn't have to contradict himself later exactly. on. Exactly. And you can understand why they do it. Yeah. You know, in the day and age of social media... Um, you know, and I'm, perhaps I've been a, a critic, of perhaps wanting Nicky to run the horses a little bit more. And there was every, probably every opportunity with Ascot riding, you know, mm -hmm. very safe, but, yeah. but quicker ground than ideal, that um, he might well have been thinking twice about running on Saturday, but he ran yeah. and rewarded, fingers crossed, the horses sound today. Yeah, we won't talk about how quick the ground's going to be for Constitution Hill on the opening day of the Cheltenham Festival. It won't be, they've already started watering, <laughs> yeah, exactly. don't worry yeah, about just, that. I was actually going to chat about that later on, is that uh, I think the long-range long forecast is quite... Dry? Dry, yeah. so I hope, uh, hope the ground is safe, yeah. I'm, I'm no, sure don't put plenty be. on, don't worry. Let, with that in mind, let's talk about the Kingwell Hurdle, because the winner of that mm. race, I like to move it, who actually travelled beautifully through the race, um, I think best he's done in his career. Mm. Um, he's he's going to go for the, the champion hurdle. He's 20 to 1 with Bet365 for the champion hurdle. Mm -hmm. What's the best he can do? It's between him and Vauban for third, isn't it? Uh, he he had a rate. He won the Great Wood off one forty two. He went into Saturday's race off one five two. Uh, Constitution Hill is one seventy three, which is going to go to one eighty. Um, Stateman is one six seven, which will probably go to one seventy in mm. time. Uh, so perhaps himself and Vauban. Uh, Vauban is rated one sixty. So I think Vauban will be third. But if you want to, I think Bet three six five made a small mistake in that I like to move it as ten to one without uh, Bet uh, without Constitution yes. Hill each way. Mm. He is yes. And like if you think about it. The next four in the betting are all mayors who are probably going to the mayor's hurdle. So you'll end up with six or seven in the champion hurdle and ten to one each way without the favourite. Now you're not going to probably beat Statement, but you never know in a horse race. So well, yeah, you're, you're making you're a right. profit of ten to one if you finish fourth, do you know? So champion hurdle betting without Constitution Hill on bet three six five, Stateman one to three, Volban three to one, <clears throat> then Honeysuckle fives, Epitant six, Love Envoy tens, Echoes and Rain ten. So take those four out. Mm -hmm. Next is I like to move it at ten to one. I think Love Envoys Connections are open-minded, okay. Um, so that that's not, a it, they're open-minded about it. I think. Oh. Um, I don't think they've made a definitive. Okay. I, I was really impressed with the performance. If I'm honest, oh, my, okay. my main criticism, I'd like to move it, has been his hurdling. You know, for a two-mile hurdle, it's not slick enough. He won the Great Wood, then he jumped five, didn't they? Yeah. You know, because of the low sun. But on Saturday, when it mattered, second, last, and last, he was brilliant. He was a bit sketchy early doors, and yeah. then he warmed up. They, they went a strong gallop there. I mean, you know. Bryony was under strict instructions to gun from the front and go a good gallop. Yeah. The circuit time was 20 lengths quicker than anything else on the card. The overall time was fierce as well. I think he could be second. It depends how they ride statement. You know, if they ride statement from the front like they did in statement Ireland. Statement probably may have to make it. He probably won't want it, but he may have to. He may have to. Yeah. So therefore, he's got, you know, there could be the opportunity for somebody to pick up the pieces and, and run on into second or third. Um, and I like to move it's Cheltenham form. He's won three. He's three out of three on the old course as well. His two yeah. defeats have come. County hurdle when he was probably over the top after a big run yeah. the previous time. Trying to make all in a race like that wasn't necessarily the best way. Um, and I think he got beaten a bumper there uh, on the new track as well. But he's three out of three on the old course. Loves good ground. And if his hurdling continues to get slicker, he's only six. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely think he can run into the frame. He won't beat State by now. <laughs> he won't, no. I but if you're back in the beat Vauban. He could, yeah. he could, he yeah. could. He can finish Vauban has not hasn't yeah. really progressed from Christmas through to the DRF. Yeah, that was a disappointing last run, wasn't it? Yeah, a little yeah. bit. And um, so. but ten to one each way should guarantee you'd imagine to be at least fourth, so you're making yeah. a small profit. I don't think you'll ever see him over two and a half miles again anyway. Not on softish ground. You might no. do it entry. Yeah. But the, the speed that he's got between hurdles. Oh. I think he's almost a bit quicker than State Man, if I'm honest. Okay. I, I'd never imagined him as the type of horse who his rider will be sitting there with a double handful because he's 
he's got so much speed to burn as he did mm. at Wincanton on, on the weekend. And obviously. he's been put on the sort of same level as, as Kaiba Kim, the new one, hasn't he, by yeah. his trainer as well, who yeah. thinks he's the best that he's trained or certainly right up there over hurdles. Yeah. Okay, let's move it back to Ireland now and the Red Mills chaser Goran Janadil upset Alton Galore. Alton Galore obviously was going to beat Fakir Duderi. I think yeah, everyone course, agrees yeah. with that. So what do you what do you make of what happened? On yeah, Janadil was good. Uh, I had something on Hothan Galore, so I wasn't overly joyed at the Sorry. time. Uh, but um, he did well. Rachel gave it a super ride. Uh, Willie was very surprised afterwards that it had won. First run since April. Yeah, he didn't think the horse was fully fit. Right. Um, so that's encouraging. Uh, he's going to go now to the Ryanair second last year when Conflated came down two out, so he would have been third. But so Janet Dill uh, seven to one to win the Ryanair. Like if Shishkin shows up, it ain't going to happen. But mm. he certainly definitely has an each way chance. I'd fancy him to finish ahead of Fury Road personally. Yeah. The weekend at least has saved the Donnellys a few quid supplementing, hasn't it? Because Horton Kalor yeah. is yeah. going to go for the Ryanair, and Shishkin's already parachuted in as favourite now. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> they'll be pleased there. Yes. Well, bank manager will be happy. Good news and bad news in that particular instance. Yeah, I Were you impressed so. with Janadil? Off yeah, that I was. I, I, you know, find it hard to be um, hugely enthusiastic about a four-runner, you know, Irish Grade Two race where they they've probably gone stop, start, stop, start, and yeah. you know the time wasn't brilliant, and you get a sort of a surprise winner. I, I think that was puts a little bit of a shadow over the form a little bit <laughs> okay. for me. But I liked Horton Kalor going into the race, like Gavin. You know, I thought he was a you know, pretty tidy horse going forwards. I was a bit disappointed to see him beaten, to be honest. OK. Um, there were some other very good performances mm -hmm. over the weekend. And I think you've also lined up a couple of performances from the week uh, just gone by as well. Uh, I'll just come to Sam. On Saturday, mm -hmm. Cap de Nor yeah. at Ascot. <laughs> the handicap chase king, Christian <laughs> yes, Williams. Yes. Um, this is his time of the year as well. Yeah. He starts mopping them all up. Well, I think Cap de Nor's five from nine in February and March. Yeah. Um, got a really good strike rate on good or good to soft ground and every time he finds himself dipping below 130 he seems to win a nice pot. Yes. Uh, must be a coincidence <laughs> I presume. <laughs> um, so he was tremendously impressive. I really liked Springwell Bay in the first race. I thought yes. that was a really tidy yeah, performance. Nice, yeah. you know, some good horses have won that in the past you know, decade on yeah. Tompa 2, Yala Enki, Dasha Drasha, um, Sporting John, Midnight River. So there's a good lineage there. Uh, historically it's a good race going forward. Was mentioned in the same breath as Blackjack Ketchum. Was he? Yeah. Where do you think they'll go with him? Well, apparently, um, he's, not going to he's not going to Cheltenham. Yeah. Oh, right, OK. Um, and certainly not anything graded, um, according to John Joe O'Neill in the immediate aftermath of the race, chatting to... Will he go to entry? Probably, wouldn't he? Possibly, yeah. I, I thought he might sneak in the boys' race. 1-3-2 got you in it last well, year. It's yeah. 1-2-6 going into that. Yeah. my God. He'd, he'd get a, a jump up. He'd, have a, he'd even have a chance of beating Gordon's five in that, wouldn't he? <laughs> uh, yeah, Matt Chapman was trying to get it out of um, John Joe O'Neill after it, but um, John Joe was <laughs> Not quite it. from the Nicky Henderson book, Not, is yeah, it? Yeah, no, he's <laughs> as usual. Um, anything else that you want to mention? Oscar Elite. Yeah, Great Harry trial Cobb for the yeah. Ultima. Yeah. <laughs> Winning a great two. Yeah. Um, circuit time was, was really, really healthy. Just slower than Shishkin, mm. which for three milers, wow. even saying that they dawdled around for the first mile, um, good effort from him. He's when he can breathe, one. he's useful. Bet 365 for the Ultima. Yeah, um, third in the race last year. I was just about to say, he's, got, he's actually, if you look at his Cheltenham record, even when he hasn't, I mean, he's run some races at Cheltenham, he travels nicely, and you've been seduced in thinking he's he's got a big one in him. Maybe the Tizard horse is coming back. It's all breathing with him, I think. I think yeah. he had a trapped epiglottis. He's had one or two issues that way before, but on, on decent ground um, in the spring, he's useful. All right. Um, what took your eye other than those that we've mentioned? Uh, famous Claremont, I thought was worth a mention. Yeah, Have not going to Cheltenham though. Okay. Not e going easier to fences around Aintree. E yeah, easier to brush through the fences okay. at Aintree than at Cheltenham. Yeah, that's the way it's gone, yeah. That shows you where we are, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah. Uh, last Thursday in Sandown, two horse to mention. Uh, you wear it well. A mare who won um, a very good mare's novice hurdle um, by seven and a half lengths. The horse was second, had previously been second to Lucia. Uh, and also last year's winner, Love Envoy, won this race. Mm. So even though it's two and a half and has to step back down to two one, that's a seven to one shot for the Mayor's Novice. Yeah. And the other horse that's worth a mention from Thursday is Stumptown, belonging to Gavin Cromwell. It uh, went to Sandown because it has an, a UK rating of one two five, mm -hmm. and uh, won easily by seven lengths. It's a horse that I've been watching for months and months, and um, I backed it in Punchestown first time in a handicap. Sorry, second time in a handicap. Had been a big eye catcher in Thurles, mm. jumped appallingly in Punchestown, came back to Thurles, jumped brilliant. And again, it's Sandow jumped brilliant again. So 
I think uh, Stump Town, if it gets into the Kim Muir, I think it's 10 to 1. Okay. Bet 365, that definitely is yeah. a huge chance. Yeah, that'd be a very interesting runner, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just a couple of, we, you mentioned, uh, obviously, you wear it well. Uh, you wear it well, won at Sandown. Thomas Moore won on mm. Saturday at uh, Ascot. Hermes Allen. Cello hurdle for Yeah, in my, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure of that. No, I wasn't. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I wasn't sure, but everything is now screaming that this is something it's else. The cello hurdle hoodoo finally <laughs> going to be laid this year. Yeah. Possibly. I was dead set against Hermes Allen, but as you say, every time you see the cello hurdle form, it's yeah. getting better and better. Yeah. yeah. He definitely um, has a squeak. Very much. Oh, so. I, yeah, I think so. Mm. I think so. It's a good race. I, mean, I imagine Paul Nichols must be. Saw him work on confidence. Saturday. You saw um, well, I saw him in his box on Saturday. Yeah. Um, Look great. <laughs> <laughs> that's, and that's the sort of info yeah. that he looked, he gave, he looked, he looked someone fit, actually folks. rang him during the show to tell him that. All the uh, legs were in the right position. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Uh, anything else from the week? Just gone. Or we, we've covered the ones um, that you wanted to mention. Hidden Valley Lake. Oh, Hidden Valley yeah, Lake. Last Thursday. Our Got stuck in a bog you, at yeah. Clonmel, didn't he? Given six pounds to the winner, Monty Star, yeah. Yeah. But he hasn't got a bad record with horses that have been beaten in that race, has he? That's true. Henry. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so I think we've covered it. Um, and Phil Dor beat Sharjah. Yeah. Dropping back, back over her. Wasn't over keen on Sharjah's head carriage no. here, were you? No, it just kind of maybe a stop start race. Patrick switched out, made a mistake, yeah. but like, yeah. Good ride and a winner. Yeah, yeah, very good. And, yeah. and Bally Byrne won the bumper mm. uh, on Sunday. Yeah, very, very keen and punched Very keen, yeah, yeah. Yeah, picked when Patrick Mullins, he actually he seemed to be asking him to run and Bally Byrne was starting to pick up. But when he actually got serious, I thought that last furlong response was incredible. It reminded me a little bit of Cousin Vinny. Uh, that inside track in Punchdown is very tricky because when they turn mm. around the front yeah. of the bend, the dash to the line. And I remember Cousin Vinny, it was literally the last bumper that she could have qualified for yeah. before Cheltenham. And Cousin Vinny was in it. It was third or fourth of furlong out. Patrick done the same thing again and just got up to win a really bad bumper. Yeah. And then a few weeks later wins the champion bumper. So, Look, Willie has five of the top six in the bumper. Yeah. Which one is going to improve the most from say their their wind to Cheltenham. Some of them could improve a stone or two stones, yeah. you know. Yeah. One line on Haydock, Rich. Go. Okay. Lorcan Williams could be out of the festival, couldn't he? Oh yes. Uh making your mind make up. Your mind up. He certainly yeah. did make his mind up. Um it's a think hard ride that horse. He is, he is, and he wouldn't have won perhaps without yeah. the um the extra encouragement, but I think nine nine strikes for the pro cush. I think he might be looking at fourteen to sixteen days. One more and they would have lost the race. Well, when will we find out? Really? I think it's Tuesday, isn't okay. it? Okay. All right. We record on Monday, but yeah, Tuesday. Keep your... I think this week's the pivotal week for, for jockeys. Uh, because for Cheltenham. Cheltenham week, yeah. So, so very expect, few rides. Expect Harry take. Cobden to have one in a bumper round Thompson <laughs> yeah. that travels yeah. on the bridle. Yeah, I'm still... Uh, where do you stand on that, Gav? The whole... Oh, you can't say the right thing no matter what you say. No, I, of course. Uh, <laughs> I remember years ago when a two-year-old would be going up the curve, the old expression was that you should never hit a two-year-old first time out. But one to get there and one to get up used to be the old expression. Yeah. But yeah, what, what's the numbers now that you can, and it's above the shoulder and below the shoulder? Seven, is it? seven and eight, yeah. Seven is it eight and eight seven or seven and six? Yeah, but seven, seven, oh. I've lost, I've lost but track. But in a few years' time, it'll come down to five and it's just, yeah. it's heading that way, isn't it? Unfortunately. Yeah. And the, the arguments about the whip hurting still going on, mm. you know, I mean, it's... It just, I'd be amazed we've got, if anyone we've got went ourselves to, in a right pickle. I would be amazed yeah. if anyone went to Haydock on Saturday and then went to the race course office afterwards and said, absolutely disgusted with that ride Lock and Williams oh, gave. That's a really good ride because he's a very, he's a notoriously hard horse. To, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Look, what I think uh, the last thing I'd say is that horses are absolutely pampered. You can't believe when you go to a yard like mm -hmm. you did the other mm -hmm. day, they're absolutely spoiled. People adore them. People, once you own a horse, it's all people ever think about. Yeah. So they're... Yeah. Oh, and the, the, the people who, who come up with this, the, the argument about saying it can hurt horses, of course it can. I can fold this piece of paper up and make a sharp edge and stab it in your eye and I'll hurt Through you. Through the glasses, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course it can hurt, but Bit it's, extreme, the, it's how rich. you use it. It's how you <laughs> use the whip. It's not, it's not designed yes. to hurt and it's not designed by the rules to be used in a manner to hurt. So that's the most important thing, yet we still keep going on about mm -hmm. Honestly, it's... And we're yeah, I think we've backed ourselves into a corner, to be honest. Move on. Should we close, close it on. off? Yep. That is the end of the racing recap. Um, and next, we are going to look ahead to the best of the racing coming up this weekend. Well, now we're going to look ahead to the big staying race of the next week. It's the Vertum Ida Chase taking place at Newcastle, four miles, one and a half furlongs. And there's a horse in this race who is currently favourite, Kitty's Light, who, of course, 
ran on the same day last year, but at Kempton, behind his old pal, Captain Nord, stable companion. Um, Kizzy's light looks an obvious one, Gavin, because primarily he has slid, as they say, down the ratings yeah. to a very workable mark. Okay. Are you happy um, with those cliches? <laughs> yeah, that's fine, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Christian Williams did the double last year within literally a half an hour of uh, Win My Wings and Captain Ord. I think he maybe could do it again. I thought Mon Big Genius would have a chance, but I just see there, I don't think it might be declared. Uh, it's not in the betting there on the screen. So, uh, yeah, Kitty's Light, why not? Um, has been an eye catch on occasion, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's he down to? One three two. One three two, and you know these Christian Williams horses. Whenever they get in and around one thirty, it's a green light. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean he's uh, quite how he's managed to get him handicapped. You know, drop thirteen pounds. I mean he, he chased home Hewitt, didn't he, in the bet three six five yeah. at the tail end of last year. Great run. Um, got a bit of previous in that race mm -hmm. as well, hasn't he? God bless him. Kitty's light. Been around for ages. Only yeah. seven. So, yeah. I mean, he's jumping fences at four, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, been a brilliant horse for, for connections, has arguably been a bit unfortunate not to win more um, sort of feature chases than he has done. But this could be the cup of tea for him. You know, four miles round, round Newcastle on good ground, that should be absolutely ideal. Obviously, he's been placed in a bet 365, so yeah. th these conditions should be ideal. There doesn't look a lot of rain at Newcastle in the, in the forthcoming days. A few showers Wednesday, I think. I think that's the only sort of precipitation they're going to see. So, um, hopefully, they've, they've saved a nice bit of fresh ground for this meeting because the track came under a few uh, brick brats, didn't they, after its last meeting? Yes. Um, uh, it's not for the first time. No. Uh, this season, once on the turf, once on the all-weather, mm. cover all bases. Um, Kids, you like, I mean, you look, look through some of his form, he was obviously placed again in the Bat365 at Sandown, yeah. 145. Before that was placed in the Scottish National, 143, mm. and here he is running off 132. So. Yeah, look, he's only 3-1, to one, but... He's yeah. the most likely winner, isn't he? Anything else that takes the eye in the... French Paradox. Order? Yes. I was quite taken with him. Um, I Handy, think the horse... Handicapper had a say after... The yeah, that's the problem. I'd be yeah. 11. Um, and traditionally, this race does go to the light, lighter weighted horses. Um, not that I'm a, a great one for trends and stats, but, you know, you often see quite a lot of lightly weighted horses, especially over four mile around Newcastle, which can mm. be an extreme test, albeit the ground won't be too bad. Uh, but I, I was quite taken with him, Newcastle on soft ground last time. Whether he coped with the faster ground or not, I don't know. I think Walsham, the horse he's beaten, runs at Carlisle early this week. So, just see how he gets on. Um, Bavington Bob, another one for the excellent Anne Hamilton team. Yeah. You know, got a bit of previous round here. Wasn't particularly a great run at um, at Kelso last time in the two-horse race, but it was just don't know who beat him. So, there could be a bit more to come to him now. He dips sort of into handicap company with a bigger field. Okay. Do you want to close off the idea with Kitty's Light being the obvious one? But yeah, I yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, it's not a race I'd usually have a bet in, but yeah, maybe Kitty's Light. But yeah, I've really looked for a big price alternative. Uh, uh, yeah, but looking I, through I, it, I just couldn't find could, anything that really no. screamed "come and back me" at a big price. It looked like yeah. if Kitty's Light is right, then stable in form, condition should suit him, yeah. and it potentially is a, is a class horse off 132 in the context of this race. And it's conceivable that Christian Williams might do the double again yeah, because yeah. Uh, Captain Nord could potentially line up again in the mm -hmm. Coral Trophy. I think he'll have a £5 penalty, won't yeah. he, for his win. Um, I did look at his record. He, he has backed up within sort of 10 and 12 days before now, but never seven. Yeah. Um, but I suppose... Very easy, didn't he? He did. And if you're galloping around Ascot on good ground, and it's, you know, you've got a chance, I suppose. I suppose he'd be doing a bit of wading, wouldn't he, in and out of the river and the yeah. sea down, yeah. at, down at Ogmore and, and freshening him up and yeah. do little with him this yeah. week. And you could understand why they'd roll the dice again, couldn't you? It's a 50 grand pot at the weekend and this is going to be a tidy, tidy prize. Uh, anything takes your eye in the card? I'd be against Ansem. I know it won very easy the last yeah. day. Pulled up in this race a year ago. I think they're roughly joined favourites with Captain Ord, but I definitely would prefer Captain Ord of the two anyway. Mm -hmm. Remastered? Yeah, I favorite? think he's being confirmed for the race and you can understand why. Got plenty of form, you know, right handed. Yeah. Disappointing at Sandown, but as David Pipe said last week, he always runs poorly at Sandown. Yes. So, and the um, Pipe horses had a, a good time of things last week. Yeah, yeah. He did, uh, David flagged up Thomas Moore, didn't he? He was yeah. really impressive, wasn't he, at Ascot and uh, Neon, Neon Moon. Moon ran really well. Yeah, behind Captain should Lord, have him yeah. on every week, really, shouldn't we? <laughs> yes. Um, First Lord de Coué ran well. Yeah, he did. So, he yeah. did. He did run well. Didn't finish second, but he was placed. <laughs> Uh, but I, I think the Nichols team will run three. Frodon with Brian yeah. on. San Calvados is the interesting one because he slipped down from, was it 161 yeah. to 154? Third in a King George 
behind Tornado Flyer under props. And hard ride? Well, it was an eager ride. It was eager. Okay, um, eager Harry. And, and I think David Maxwell. Da yeah, David Maxwell's injured, so I think uh, Harry Cobden's going to ride. So okay. his price might tumble a little bit, I would think. And obviously, Enrillo's in there as well. Um, another horse I quite like was Our Power, who, who stayed yeah. on in this race last year to finish third, but just looks a more altogether model. Mm. Although he's he only beat Danny Kerwin at Ascot. There's been a couple of horses come out of that race and won, I think. Yeah. I've seen the, the big breakaways in there, but. Mm. It wouldn't be the ideal conditions and I'd, I love the horse and I just wouldn't imagine knowing the horse as well as we've seen on the race course. Good ground, Kempton would be his ideal to probably get him yeah. at it. Not that he's not always at it anyway. No. <laughs> um, but too much at it, I would say, to, to, to rule him out. Yeah, so, you wouldn't think that track would suit him, no, no. 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 And it hasn't done before. No. Um, Frodo, I thought. Yeah, I thought Fred could. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah. very, yeah. very good record around Kempton. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's King George winner. When he's yeah. finished, yeah. When he's finished around Kempton, one, 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 and then he's finished fourth and third in the last two yeah. runs of the yeah. King George. You know, and he's got beat eighteen legs by Brave Man's Game. who's a single figure price for the Gold Cup, and he's conceding weight in a handicap, and that that's probably one of the reasons I wouldn't fancy Anne Sam either. Is that yeah. there's going to be plenty of competition yeah. for yeah. the lead? I would yeah. think. The other thing about Fred as well is no handicap marks are one thing, but. The rhythm of a race yeah. is almost as important as anything else, if not more so. And I and if Frodon gets into a rhythm like he did it with Canty, a rhythm horse, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. I'm happy. I'm happy. I don't really mind what weight he's carrying. Well, no, he's trying to tell after four or five fences. If, exactly. If he's on a I'll jump out there, yeah. bet then. Yeah, I think was he fourteen to one? Yeah, I think that's a fair price. All right, very fair price. Is there anything else that you want to mention? No, the interesting one you said there, but uh, if Harry Cobden rides uh, Saint Calvados, that would be it's shortened for me. Yeah, yeah that would definitely be interesting because Harry over a fence is just oh. amazing to watch. And he, he, if he's going to get, he's going to get a strong gallop here isn't yeah. he, with Ansem mm. in the race. So that's going to help him settle because obviously two starts back at Ascot, yeah. he bombed off with with Maxi. Um, last time was a bit better behind Pick Dory. I wouldn't say he had a look see, but mm. it was just a, you know it was a confidence booster over two and a half round there, wasn't yeah. it? And Paul's always thought, felt that he three miles he will get it. And as good as David Maxwell is, I prefer Harry Cobden. Well, how, how, good is Harry, well, how good is Harry Cobden riding at the moment? Brilliant. In terms of yeah, all the jockeys, Britain and Ireland, where, where would you put him at the moment? I'd have him up there with Paul Town and Jack Kennedy. I'd have the three of them together. Oh, he's, I think now he's, that Davey yeah. is kind of gone. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. So we can include Davey. Yeah. I'm on a panel with him this Friday, so it better be nice. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'd have Paul, uh, Harry and uh, Jack as the best Kennedy. three. Uh, yeah. Would you? So you'd, oh. Brian, you're having him above Brian Hughes, Sean Bowen. Look at you have to I'd, pick. It's like yeah, picking. take a shot. I'd, I'd, um, I'd say he's probably the best rider. In, it's like picking your favourite child. It's not easy. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 jockeys, I love you all. I think he's a class act, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. I think I think he, he he walks every track. I'm not saying the other lads don't, but it, you know Harry w would have his ideas about where he's going to race yeah. on the ground. It, it, tactics wise, he's pretty switched on. Yeah, and we know it's it's not an easy job. That you know, no. it, it, there's been a few high profile casualties and. Yeah. Harry's done really well to, you know, there have been fallow periods there when, since he's been um, yeah. lead jockey at, at Ditchy and he's come through those well, he takes criticism well, he's got that sort of attitude and mentality where he tries to shrug it off and, and, and goes again. That, doesn't mean that he doesn't care. That's, and that's the, that, you summed it up, and that's what I well, think. Well, top is, level sports between the ears, isn't it? Well, I think that's where he, he seems to be at his personal peak. He just, he's riding with a freedom and a confidence yeah. that... Only you know when you're riding when you when you've had a, a series of winners and you've in a position where you think you're, you know, you've got your the support of everyone. You're making mostly the right decisions because you can't make every decision on a horse the right one. But he's he's riding with that sort of fr free confidence that yeah. I think makes him a joy. Particularly like him over a fence, uh, the way he presents mm. a horse to a yeah. fence is just amazing. He's yeah. just a great horseman as well, and he's strong. I want to see him give it the old Ruben Neves if he goes over the line. Oh, sorry, I thought Sankawa. it was Rashford. No, Ruben's been doing that for six years. Oh, really? Because no one years. notes because... Uh, no, he's, <laughs> he's, tip, he's tipping a wig to Perlo, isn't he? That's, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> right, OK. Uh, so that's a look at the best of the racing coming up this weekend. But before we get into our next segment, which is the Cheltenham preview, don't forget to sign up to Odds Checker's brand new Cheltenham Super Service in the build-up to the festival. You'll find exclusive insight from Andy Holding and Johnny Ward, as well as market movers, news and giveaways.
So this week on Racing Weekly, we are looking at three races at the Cheltenham Festival, the Champion Hurdle, the Mayor's Hurdle, and the Ryanair Chase. We kick off with what most people are calling it, Constitutional Hills Race. Some people are calling it Constitutional Hill versus State Man. Constitution Hills 2 to 7 with Bet365, State Man 5 to 2, then it's 9 to 1 Vauban. Well, we'll talk about the others as and when <laughs> necessary. Um, do you see it as a proper showdown between Constitution Hill and State Man? I do. I think State Man is, is, is very, very good. I think he'll get to at least the low 170s, but I still think Constitution Hill will win and win well. But I think State Man is unlucky. I'm trying to think of another sporting analogy where you've got a fantastic player at the one time. Oh, so Richard Johnson against Tony McCoy. That'll do. Um, <laughs> That's why he's paid the big bucks, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Um, so Richard Passan so, against Nick Luck, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're always going to come off second best, don't you, mate? <laughs> Poor Lucky. Sorry. <laughs> so I think Stapen is excellent. He, he's good enough to win a normal champion hurdle, but just the other guy could be the best hurdler we've seen. He's actually, it's mad to think that he's only been uh, over hurdles five times and the impression he's already left. Yes. You yes. know, it's amazing. And uh, Stapen is five from six because he had a fall in Leopardstown on his first start, won his last five. Um, he stays further. He's already won over two and a half. Uh, is Stapen going to make the running if there's a small field and there's no other front runner like mm. he did the last time, perhaps? Constitution Hill can make the running? He can. He did in Newcastle, so no reason why not. Yeah. The thing that you would love the most about Constitution Hill is that he's as quiet as a lamb. Mm. His attitude, he's so laid back, um, nothing flusters him, uh, big crowds or whatever. So there's absolutely no negative to him yeah. whatsoever. So I think no matter what happens in the race, Nico has choices and that's crucial. But without question, Sam, mm -hmm. this is his toughest opponent. Not surprisingly, because it is a championship race, but this is his, the, yeah. the hardest task and he's faced. I think we were in unison. We were very enthusiastic on Stateman's chance going into the Irish champion, weren't we? Um, you know, and look, I'm not sure he had to improve a whole lot there to win that race of so two miles on good ground round Leopardstown. That was always going to play mm. more to his strengths than perhaps Honeysuckle uh, and Vauban et al. But I think his, his hurdling's getting slicker. I think he's becoming more of a rounded model now. Yeah. Um, you know, he won a county hurdle on how many starts did he have over hurdle? Two, three? Before he yeah, uh, went three, and won yeah. a 20-odd run a county hurdle. I know he went lane eight all the way around, but he was still... To win a competitive handicap yeah. like that, you know, I, I don't care how much you think you've got in hand. It's, it, the hustle and bustle of those races is difficult to cope with, and he didn't flick a hair. So, um, very, very professional horse. I think I've said before that in, in any other champion hurdle year, he'd be a red-hot favourite for me and the one they'd all have to beat. But he's up against a beast, isn't he? Which yeah. is a bit unfortunate for connections. Uh, is there any play? In the I mean, you mentioned... <laughs> I, I'm, I'm jokingly going to say, right, this is only, I'm only joking here, but if... If, um, would you agree the statement will definitely be in the first three? Yes. I just uh, I don't mind backing a horse at three to one each way, even at a fifth of the odds. If you have a ten each way, and he's second or third, you get back sixteen quid. Yeah. If he happens to win, you get back fifty six quid. You, so you win, you either lose four or win thirty six. So it's kind of nine to one statement. But I, I just think if you back him, he, he's not quite three to one yet, but he will be on the day I'd say or the day before. Really, I can't see myself having a bet in the race. Maybe something small each way in Stapen, but you're probably going to lose something small. I'd like to move it. 10 to 1 each way without. Yeah. yeah. Finish third or fourth and win a few quid. Yeah, I, I think he's very... Yeah. I, I still think he's a runner for second. I do think, I, I, as much as I love Stateman, it, it just depends how the race is run. If Stateman yeah. makes the running and they go hell for leather down the hill, he's trying to burn off Constitution yeah. Hill, he's on the inside and Constitution Hill comes down the outside of him, falls right away. If, if Sam Twiston Davis is a bit savvy and yeah. Vauban, you know, they can pick up pieces later yeah. on. And you don't, off, you look at this race, Theatre World used to finish second every year, Charge mm -hmm. used to finish. It's not always, it yeah. doesn't always go down to the horse. Don't get involved in the business be, end. Exactly. Early, yeah. Yeah. But you're just hoping that STD doesn't perhaps try and get involved in the business end mm. too early. If Constitution Hill weren't in the race, the horses that are still potential, what price would State Man do you think? Well, and the, without market, he's one to three, but. Uh, he wouldn't be one to three. I'm no, sure it, he'd be, he wouldn't he'd be, be twos be one to, on. Yeah, mm. I'm sure he'd be twos on. Statement mm. to win. Like yeah. he, the chance are he's going to beat Vauban again. I don't see why. Yeah. Like Vauban didn't improve from Christmas to the DRF. The, the distance actually increased by a length. I think so. Um, he just. I mean, I'm a big fan of Vauban, obviously, we, but I, I, I agree. I, his hurdling for me just leaves a little yeah. bit to be desired. Yeah. Five years of age. Um, I've got a lot of time for him, but I, I just don't see his curve. As sharp, okay. almost as I like to move it. 
I think we could end up, as I said earlier, maybe five, six, seven runners, which yeah. mm -hmm. is a small pity. Now, people crib about some of the mares because there's a mares hurdle that they're not going into the champion hurdle, but they'd have no chance in the champion hurdle anyway. So I don't know how they would improve the champion hurdle, personally. Well, I think... <laughs> try, try, try. Oh, are you again? Are you, yeah, oh, okay, yeah. go I, I'm, I, I take your him. point that with the, the schedule as it is now, I'd go for the... If you have the mare, why not go for the mare's hurdle? I get mm -hmm. it. But I'm a traditionalist. And the champion hurdle and the stairs hurdle are the races where you find out how good your mare is. So these mares win the race. Corvega won the mares hurdle 150 times. You, I had no idea how good a mare she was. So when you show up in a new market, when is the guineas in May? Is it? Yeah, yeah. first weekend. Yeah. So in do May. you complain about the 1,000 guineas being on? No, we still find this, that's like finding out about them. And then when they get to a race where they could go for, say, for example, later in the season, you can go run to the Sun Chariot in Newmarket or you could go for the QE2. Okay. You make your choice. If you go for the Sun Chariot, disappointing. But if you're a good horse, please run in the QE2 so we can find out how good you are. Whoever wins this race, the Mayor's Hurdle, which is the next race we'll talk about, <laughs> um, whoever wins the, the Mayor's Hurdle yeah. at the Cheltenham Festival, we aren't really going to know where they're standing still is. I mean, so Honeysuckle wins the champ mayor's, mayor's Hurdle. Well, what if she'd run in the champion hurdle? What? what? That gives us a podcast to yeah. chat about it, though, doesn't oh, it? Oh, Marie's <laughs> Rock wins the... Oh, I wonder why she'd have gotten the stairs up. Because those races are higher up the pecking order in the rankings of their existence. The Mayor's Hurdle... I think the Mayor's, the mayor's Hurdle has, has its place. place. How good, did you know how good Annie Power was after she fell in the Mayor's Hurdle? She probably would have won, yeah. <laughs> but she was um, a good mare then, then. Yeah. but you only and found out when she lined up in the... Yeah, but I mean, you're talking about a mare like Annie Power comes along once every 10 years. Now, Honey Sucker wins the champion hurdle twice. They weren't the <laughs> best champion hurdles in the world. And even Annie, uh, sorry, Honey Sucker from last year, the year before, wouldn't have a chance against Constitution Hill anyway. So How do you know? On a line through state, man. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. On this year's form. Yeah, but yeah I think exactly. On this year's yeah. form. I think the mare's hurdle has its place. I like the race. And I think this year is a really good renewal. It is a really good renewal <laughs> this year. And Honeysuckle is the 9 to 4 favourite with Bet365. 5 to 2 Marie's Rock. Epitant 11 to 4. Brandy Love 4 to 1. Love Envoy uh, 5 to 1. Echoes in Rain 7 to 1. Um, Honeysuckle? I keep changing my mind on this race, to be honest. Okay. Um, I think that Honeysuckle and Epitant being 9 is a slight negative mm. for the two of them. Uh, I'd be more into Marie's Rock, but again, you can't be sure, is she going to go here, is she going to go to the stairs? Uh, and you're not even fully sure that Epitant is going here yet. Uh, you also have Brandy Love, I see there, today she's entered on Wednesday to run uh, in Punchstown, yes. in the seven owner race against Queensbrook. So even though she's not as good <clears throat> going right-handed, if she won well on Wednesday, uh, because she's trained by Willie more than anything else, uh, she's only 4-1 to one to win it at the moment. Yeah. So I'd imagine she'll be another three to one chance if she wins on yeah. Wednesday. Like the betting at the moment, they're nine to four, eleven to four, five to two, four to one, five to one. They'll probably be all bigger on the day because mm. the chances are the most of them will show up. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's a really good race. And if you if on the day you're getting seven to two, four to one, Marie's Rock, if they all run, I'd definitely be into backing her each way. Mm. Uh, I'm I'm with you, I think. She's Snap. One. Yeah. Marie's, Marie's Rock, Rock yeah. yeah. I mean her last four performances have all improved, like yeah. the curve's still going upwards. Um I just think she's a class mare. She's got a turn of foot, she travels well, she hurdles beautifully and she loves Cheltenham. And I think she's another example of Nikki Henderson's excellent training. Because mm -hmm. she, the start of her season... I got a bit in a Lanzarote. So did I. Yeah, I yeah. That well, day. she was unlucky, wasn't she? She was. She yeah, got yeah, bored. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then yeah. she, I mean, he got her back on track. I mean, terrific training. I think that's been superb. Because she used to be a tearaway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then now she's two and a half miler and possibly even a three miler. So yes. great training, yeah. Quick well, remember, at the start of, at the start of the, not the season, the season before that, um, Epiton had won the champion hurdle and there was talk of Marie's Rock also being entered in the fighting fifth and Nicky Henderson was debating where to go with Marie's Rock and where to go with Epiton because he thought Marie's mm. Rock was that good mm. but things went a little bit awry and then suddenly she's now obviously last season she, she put it together nicely so I think she's tremendous but let me see in where, my, where, do, you, where do you stand on the, the honeysuckle is she great debate I mean you look down the list of the horses that she's beaten when she, yeah. Echoes in Rain Epiton Zanahir Ronald Pump Charger, Abracadabra, Ronald Pump. It's a bit like the Bouvardier argument, you know. Mm -hmm. Did he ever beat much either? You can only beat what's in front of you. And you did, yeah. <laughs> that was the next one on the list, to be fair. The mayor. Yeah, the mayor. <laughs> the mayor. Um, I look, Honeysuckle, to what did she win? Her first 16 races, so mm. just an amazing mayor. Um, is she quite as good as some of the great, the all-time tops? Probably not, but you can't crib her too much, I don't no. think. 
I, th I think if I owned Marie's Rock, there's not a chance I'd run on the stairs hurdle. No. Absolutely mental. I couldn't, I can't it's, understand it's, it. it. Uh, well, I think, no, no of course not, because there's the mayor's hurdle, so you've yeah, got but no also problem. the trip, more so the trip. If there, let's say there was a Ryanair hurdle. <laughs> Okay. Over two Don't play any, any ideas of yeah, people's no. minds. That's going to be the next race <laughs> added to the On the fifth day of January. Hey, two will be shaking. Yeah. Shake but, it um, yeah, I definitely wouldn't run her in the stairs hurdle. I don't see why you would take a chance uh, that she could stay. She probably would stay, but yeah. you know, a lot of the time horses I, don't stay that extra. I think they've, they've mooted that before seeing Tia Poo and Blazing Cow. They probably looked at the race and mm. thought, oh, if we've got classical dreams of beating Florian mm. Porter, yeah, maybe, but... Those two coming in, mm. being strong contenders, yeah. along with the improvement from home by the Lee. It looks a warm race right. now. Doesn't I it? think um, Mickey's just getting greedy. He wants to win the champion <laughs> hurdle. He does, yes. The mayor's hurdle. Yes. Yes. And the, the stairs. So he's and going for the here. I'm, I'm really resisting getting deeper into this, but that's, yeah. my, that's, that's where my issue with the mayor's hurdle existing being is that. But you'll have to get over it. I do have to get over it. <laughs> because they're never, ever going to reduce Cheltenham back to three days. No, they're they're going to keep no. adding more races. But the point, that's been the point, because you're just talking about, you, you see the, what others are running, Tiapu, mm. Blazing Cow, the stairs hurdle looking a really good race. Why, why go but for that? Because On the other side, like 10, 15, 20 years ago, you, you wouldn't have all these brilliant mares running at the moment. That's a fair point. I yeah, mean, I, I will accept that. Not that, all that those the mayor's programme is now much better. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. But I can understand your point. But the Lord giveth, he taketh away. <laughs> such a wise man, Sam. He's such a wise man. So we're agreeing Sage. that Marie's Rock... Assuming she doesn't go for the <laughs> champion or the stairs. Marie's yeah. rock, non runner, no bet. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Think, Thank you, Bet365. I think uh, you could get an E-Trade price of a 7 to 2 on the day, particularly yeah. if Brandy Love wins on Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. And finally, in our Cheltenham preview, <laughs> we are going to look at a race that we've already touched on uh, the Ryanair chase, because it now looks rather straightforward. Uh, in the last week or so, we know that Alaho's not going for the race, and we do know that Shishkin is the 11 to 10 favorite, or at least we believe he is, 11 to 10 favorite, Blue Lord 5 to 2, Conflated 9 to 2, Fury Road 9 to 2, Janadil 7s, uh, 8 to 1, bar those. You, you suggested earlier on that this is a straightforward task for Shishkin. It, it pretty much is, but uh, I can't see myself having a bet. Did you know that in Shishkin, in 66% of his last three races, he didn't perform very well. <laughs> There's a stat for you. <laughs> so, it's quite a small sample size, that, though. That's a tremendous the previous, stat. The previous ones were 100% there, weren't they? Yeah. So I'm only, I'm only messing, but... <laughs> um, I just think, back in a horse at Cheltenham, in a championship race at Eve Money, you just need every single duck in a row to be back in a horse. And what would be the ones that you'd be, what would be the ducks that you'd be worried it's, about regarding Shishkin? Uh, the other horses, no ducks, but it's just himself. Okay. Is he going to be the horse that, you know, he was on Saturday, that he was previously? Um, it's, a, it's a valid question. Yeah. Four weeks on from producing, yeah, it's not even arguably one weeks, of his, yeah. you know, it's within a pound of his best ever, you know, the handicappers are rating that within a pound of his best performance. Yeah. Saturday was almost too good, if you know what I mean, mm -hmm. you know? You just, is he going to do that again in four weeks' time? Yeah, that's what I'm just yeah. wondering, okay. is he going to do that? But he's the best horse in the race. If he shows up in the same form Saturday, he wins. But would you back him at even money? I think I'd sooner back a horse in a maiden hurdle at even money. Okay. I, I've written a piece for the Weatherby's Guide without seeing Shishkin run on Saturday, and I put Fury Road up each way. Right. Um, and then Alaho came out. Clever. Well, no, the idea was that Fury yeah. Road's a 12 to 1 chance with Alaho yeah. in, and if Alaho didn't show up late, you can get a nice anti post price about Fury Road. Yes. Um, unfortunately, the day that I was going to back Fury Road, Alaho came out before I could get on. But anyway, I'd, I'd probably put him up each way. I can't see conflated running. Janadil's also a runner now. Um, Pick Dory won't be. Fakir Duda Ria Dat will probably go straight to. Uh, my, my thinking was that the race could fall apart. Yeah, but yeah, obviously, yeah. Shishkin uh, yeah. now is. You'd fall over a Fury Road beat Shishkin, wouldn't you? Oh, I would now, yeah, yeah. most definitely, yeah. But I, I wouldn't have done a week ago. Yeah, I think Blue Lord obviously has a good chance of being in the frame if he goes here instead of the champion chase. Uh, very good at Christmas, not so good in the DRF. Yeah. Um, I was against him in Clamel, first time of the season. Uh, by all accounts, he wasn't fit, but he battled on well on heavy ground over two mm. and a half. So I think he'll stay. But they need to find uh, Shishkin 10% below his best to have any chance. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think they're really keen to learn the champion chase. The Lord, Lord. Lord, yeah. yeah. They, well, they were. That was certainly the plan before the DRF. Yeah. Mm. I hope they do. I thought yeah. that would be his best shot at winning. He's not going to the mayor's hurdle anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's not been. It's not totally ruled out, is it? <laughs> well, not nowadays. Um, yes. Yeah, so Shishkin. We're all, 
<laughs> we're all in agreement that Shishkin is going down. Yeah. Hazardous waters here. Yeah, yeah, stop move on. it. Shishkin is the one to beat by a country mile in the Ryanair chase. Is there anything else with regards to Cheltenham bet at this stage that you feel that you should, you should be mentioning to the Racing Weekly? I just think that um, uh, the fact that the ground... The fact that there's very little rain coming in the next few mm. weeks, I think Gordon Elliott won't be happy. Um, Delta work who's evens for the cross country. Yeah. I have him in a few bets from a while ago. So I'm, right. But the fact is they're not probably going to water the cross country. If the ground is good and he's even money, that just wouldn't be ideal. Okay. Uh, the second one is Tiu Poo from Gardens. Yes. He wants a cut on the ground to be at his best. Now, obviously, it'll make him easier to stay three miles <clears throat> in Let a fast run race, unlike Gorn Park, which is very slowly run. But if the ground was good, it wouldn't suit him and Jerry Colomb as well. So there's three Gordon Elliott horses. Yeah. Now, I think Mighty Potter will get away with it because he's one and good ground. Yeah. And the other thing about, say, uh, the Thursday course, including the stairs hurdle, is that they can water that right up to Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd see how much uh, water they put on the course, but just, like, sometimes you've gone to Cheltenham and it can be 16, 18 degrees, mm -hmm. and you're there in your shirt. Mm. And yeah. you yeah. can see the yeah. track drying in front of you. Yeah. So if the ground was very really short, good... Very just, shortly lose it, that shirt that you're wearing. <laughs> yeah. So just be careful if the ground ends up a little bit quicker than we think. We all have to reassess form and what has run well and good ground over the last few months. Yeah, I wouldn't mind if the ground was decent for Hidden Valley Lake on Friday. I, I, I'm certainly not going to lose faith in him on the performance last yeah. week on horrible ground at Clonmel. Yeah, the horse that beat him is absolute beast, isn't he? About yeah. one yeah. and a half times the size, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was much Make some bigger, chaser, yeah. he will. Monty yeah, Star, uh, yeah. Monty, yeah. Um, and Hermes Allen's one on good ground, on soft ground, desperate ground at Newbury. Mm -hmm. So you're going to end up backing him, yeah? I'm going to end up. You're going to, I'm going to. I, I was <laughs> against him. I was like, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, now I'm with Hermes Allen. The form is so strong. Right. I think that's just about it, isn't it? For any 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 other nuggets that you've got for us? Any other nuggets? I could pass on a, a finally another positive for Stay Away Faye in the Albert Bartlett as well. I okay. think I think twenty five to one or twenty to one non run and a bet with three six five. That might shorten up a little bit. Okay. Paul Nichols. Right. Didn't run many in that race. No. Uh, right. I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. Great. Um, Gavin, thank you so much Pleasure. for thank coming you. over for yeah. the chat. Really enjoyed it. Thanks to Mrs. Will Lake. we see you? We, <laughs> will you see, will you be at, will we see you at Cheltenham? Uh, I will just coming for the no. mayor's hurdle. No, I've to do videos for my website, so I'll be at home. Cool. Oh. Shame. Yeah. Professional, you see. Well, you know, I tell you what, there'll be always an invitation for you to come and play golf here. I want to play golf against you, yeah, definitely. Well, it's never well, invited me. Do you play? Yeah, Probably badly, yeah. badly, but he's never yeah. invited me. We'll have a game for a fiver. Yes, um, I know I'll be backing you, so... I'll, I'll be off 24 <laughs> anyway. I'll be backing you as well then. Uh, well, thank you very much to Sam and to Gavin Lynch for their company on this week's episode of Racing Weekly, brought to you by Oddschecker in association with Beth365. As always, if you've liked what you heard or watched, then please leave us a kind review. I say kind review on Apple Podcasts or in the comments section on YouTube. Actually, just, just say what you want. Nowadays, people do and they don't seem to care. Um, and we'll be back next week with a special episode where Sam goes to visit the yard of bright young thing amongst the training ranks, Harry Durham. But for now, from the team at Racing Weekly, bye-bye.